pulse is dropping. I think we're losing him. He's lost a lot of blood. He's going into shock. Give me 10 units of AB blood. Well, actually, no, you better make that typo. Well, no, maybe we should go with the B. Well, actually, um, maybe, uh, which one? We're losing him. I don't know. Pick one. Sir. Sir. Sir, are you all right? Huh? Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm here to donate some blood. Oh, all right. Uh, just have a seat over there and the nurse will be right with you. Okay, thanks. I've come here to this clinic to donate some blood, but there's something I'm curious about. Have you ever wondered why they use all those letters to describe our blood? I mean, what makes A blood different from O or B? And why is it so important that doctors know what kind of blood we have? Well, it's taken centuries for us to unlock the secrets of our blood, and we've learned some hard lessons along the way. For instance, we once believed that illnesses were caused by bad blood. So to make people well again, we would drain the offending blood from their bodies. As you've probably guessed, this procedure wasn't very successful, and for a couple of good reasons. First, Here's how much blood is flowing through the average adult body, about five liters. Now, if you were to lose a liter or more of your blood, you'd start to suffer from a condition known as shock. When you lose a lot of blood, your body can become starved for oxygen. If that blood isn't quickly replaced, you can fall into a coma and die. And that's what happened to a lot of those early patients who had their blood drained. They died. Now, in one respect, those early blood-draining doctors were correct. A lot of infectious diseases are carried by our blood. But what they didn't know is that our blood also carries the cells we need to fight those diseases. Our blood can be divided into two main components, red cells and plasma. It's the red cells that give our blood its color, but their main function is to carry oxygen to our tissues. Now, if you remove all the red cells from your blood, you're left with a yellow fluid. That's the plasma. And it's here in the plasma that you find the cells that help you fight infections. Now, the discovery that blood was required to fight disease gave the early doctors a new idea. Why not just transfer some blood from a healthy person into the body of a sick person? Well, sometimes this procedure actually helped. But in most cases, the result was, well, fatal. What they didn't realize at the time is that not all blood is created equal. You see, a little further along in history, we discovered two special proteins on the surface of our red blood cells. They're called antigens, and we labeled them A and B. Then we discovered that some people's red cells have only the A antigen. Some have only the B antigen. Some have both A and B, and some have neither antigen. Put it all together, and you have the four basic blood groups. A, B, AB, and O. I know what you're saying. So what? Big deal. Well, it's not a big deal. That is, until you try and mix some of those blood types together in someone's body. To show you the problem, let's go back to the clinic. Now, I happen to have type A blood. So let's take a sample of my blood and divide it into two. To the first sample, we'll add a solution containing plasma from type A blood, the same blood type as mine. To the other sample, we'll add a solution containing plasma from type B blood. Now we'll mix everything together and there's your problem. The first sample looks normal, but in the second sample, the red cells have all clumped together into a sticky mess. So what's happening? Well, floating around in the plasma of everyone's blood are structures called antibodies. Now, the job of the antibody is to patrol your blood looking for foreign invaders. So suppose I have type A blood, but I get injected with type B blood. When my antibodies see these B antigens, they think this cell is an intruder. So they latch onto it and sound the alarm. 
And as the intruding red cells and the antibodies collide, they stick together and form a clump. These clumps disrupt the flow of blood to your cells, and without emergency treatment, you can die. Today we prevent this problem by cross-matching a sample of the donor's blood with a sample of the patient's blood. This test ensures that the blood is compatible and that there will be no clumping. However, sometimes in an emergency, we don't have time to cross-match the blood before it has to be transfused. In this case, we have a backup plan. We always transfuse type O blood. Why type O? Well, if you remember, type O blood has neither the A or the B antigen on its surface, which means no matter what type of blood you have, the antibodies in your plasma won't think this is an intruder, and your cells won't clump together.